know when you have those nights where your brain just won't shut off and there's like a million things that you want to do and you're like, yeah, let's schedule that into my week. And then you're like, no, let's do it right now. Well, I'm having one of those nights. It is almost 9 p.m. My plant room is a hot mess. I will give you a grand tour from here with my phone and plug it in next to me here. Um, I know it might not look like a giant disaster, but in comparison to what it normally looks like, it is a disaster. I have a few things that I need to do in here. So I was gonna include this in a week of, but I'm not filming a week of until next week. And this has gotta happen now. So this is a weird sort of impromptu video. I wasn't even gonna film this to be honest, but I was like, you know what? I already have makeup on, let's just do it. So, um, we're just hanging out in my plant room today. We're doing plant chores. We are cleaning and organizing. Um, it's gonna be a challenge because I am extremely clumsy. Like I said, it's nighttime. I live in an apartment and if things come crashing to the floor, my downstairs neighbor is not going to be happy with me. Luckily, person next to me just got arrested, so in terms of noise traveling this way, shouldn't be a problem. Um, the unit is currently empty. We're doing some new things. I bought this cart from Ikea and I've decided to consolidate all of my plant supplies. Not like the substrates and stuff, but like my fertilizers and sprays and stuff. Like I wanna consolidate it all to this cart and I wanna free up my closet space for things that I actually need storage for. Um, like my soil, all my bins and stuff. Like it is a nightmare to get in and out of there. So that's what we're doing today. I need to pack up Fern's package. Um, I just, there's like a million things to do. So we're just gonna get started, we're gonna do it. I'm not really sure what the format of this video is gonna be. You guys are literally just hanging out with me. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope it inspires you to get organized for spring because we are 15 days until spring and I am so freaking excited, even though that means jack crap here in Vancouver. It's probably not gonna get warm for another like three months. So I really don't know what I'm excited for. But anyway, I think the first thing that I wanna do is package up Fern's plant, um, which is gonna be dropped off first thing tomorrow morning. Um, I do not have a plant table in here anymore. I have gotten rid of it because I'm just going to be buying a folding table that I'll use for these repots and stuff, but I do not have it yet. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go on the floor. I know I said that I wasn't going to be showing you guys the extra plant I was giving her, but um, you guys are gonna see it anyway. So if you didn't see the video that I showed this in, this is the Monstera Escaletto. I'm kind of hoping the roots haven't rotted or anything because this substrate has been actually, oh look, there's new roots. Oh product showcase is off, but I actually can see a ton of new roots in here. Freaking tree fern fiber, man, it's so magical. So that's good. Um, I basically just wrapped the whole thing in saran wrap. I got some polyfill up at the top to keep everything nice and packed in there. I'm gonna try and squeeze it into this box because the box that I got from my friend is a little bit, it ended up being a little bit too big and I'm hoping that this is gonna be okay. So I do have a heat pack somewhere in here. Um, this is good for 72 hours, which is fine because I'm gonna ship it overnight. The best results individually wrap warmers loosely with a piece of paper and place warmers along the walls of the shipping box or between shipping containers. Place the red check face down, but then it says to wrap, to wrap the warmer. You know what? This is just too complicated. I think I'll put the warmers near the leaves. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna tape it down, I think. Frick, where's my tape? Oh, it's behind me. <laughs> I'm so dramatic. Jeez, the lighting is awful. We're just gonna hope and pray that that's good enough. Okay, so I'm gonna put this face down. I know you guys can't really see it that well. Um, so the other plant that I'm gonna give her, which I'm very worried about, is this Dioscoria discolor. I don't know if she has one, to be honest. I tried scouring her. YouTube and her Instagram for it, but I didn't see anything, so maybe not. And if she does, then maybe she can gift this to a friend or add it to her pot. Burn. 
if you're watching this, I am so sorry, but this is going to be the most annoying box to unpackage with all this freaking tape. And then I also snipped her a piece of my variegated heteracium, the variegated heart leaf philodendron. So I have a very limited amount of this polyfill, which is what I'm gonna bank on to keep this nice and secure, primarily these leaves. Sorry, I'm trying to give you guys a good view. I wasn't mentally prepared to film today, we're just winging it. I'm not very familiar with the proper way to ship leaves that are this big without, you know, having it wrapped in plastic like, like Equigenera does, but I'll try my damnedest. I'm just gonna try and like literally engulf it into a pillow of polyfill. Okay, not the cutest note, but it'll do. First task done. Now I just need to make it to the post office as soon as they open. Second task on the roster um, is to set up this new cart because I feel like it makes sense to get this cart set up, get everything out of the closet, put it on the cart, and then get the closet clean. Right? Right. Okay, so I was a little bit um, confused at how this bar cart or whatever utility cart fits into this little box okay so the um utility cart that i got obviously i showed you a photo of it but it is the nisiphores bar cart i went to ikea today i'm telling you i've just been having like the worst luck while, while i'm out in public so while I was looking for kitchen stuff because I wanted to buy new, new utensils, um, there were these kids, it was like a group of like four kids and their mom and they were like running around like crazy and trust me, I'm very, very understanding of parents out with their kids trying to like get things done and trying to keep things under control. Usually if there's like a kid having a tantrum and like just like screaming like I feel like I'm very understanding in that regard because after my sister had kids, I'm like, dude, that shit is difficult. But why was this mom letting her kids, why was this mom let, letting her kids run around screaming and like they had these cardboard tubes, I don't know where they got them from, but they were going around like hitting people's carts, hitting people's bodies, and the mom was just like smiling on her phone. So I'm like trying to shop and this little kid is like hitting me with a tube and I like grabbed it and he like looked at me like he was possessed and I was like, nope, not today. Not today, but like seriously. And then when I got in line, the man behind me was just belching, just letting out the most like massive burps. And like, I understand people burp, I burp, but like, I felt like the breath was getting on. It was just a terrible, terrible day at Ikea, let's just say that. Click, click. I think this is what the click, click means. Uh, click. I like that little gadget, no screws. Click, click. It literally says click, click. I'm not just saying click, click for no reason. The direction says click, click. Okay, so there's one and then three. Click, click. Okay. We're we're clicking more. Click, click. Look how easy that was. This is where it could all go wrong with this sound stuff. Go this way.
Gently. Gently, I said. I said gently. No major disaster yet. But the night is young. Oh, my back hurts. Oh, I'm so old. Oh, it hurts. Well, I will say assembly was, I mean, this is probably the easiest thing I've ever assembled from Ikea. The, it was fun. I thought it was enjoyable, the, especially the clicking part. Let me show you what I mean. So it comes with these little thingamabobs and these thingamabobs, they click. Well, it does make a clicking sound inside of here, but that part was fun until we got to the screwing of the screws part. That was, uh, you know, Rate that at zero out of 10. So anyway, um, she's together and I'm happy. Let me get all this cardboard out of here. All right, I think it is gonna be a challenge trying to get everything into this cart that I need to, but I also think this is a good time to sort of <laughs> rethink the things that are inside of here because I feel like I don't need it all Maybe I do. Okay, so it makes no sense to me to put everything... I feel like it makes most sense to me to put all the things that I reach for often on the top. So that's where we're gonna start. Okay, so I've got my little Muji box that I'll stick the billions in. And my Dynamico. I think I can put a little jar here. But do I need everything in here? I have my shears, I have a spoon. Actually, yeah, I kind of do need all of this, maybe except for this. I have great white. I'm gonna stick this little magnet onto the cart here. And I'm just gonna stick my scrapers on there so that I can access it easily. And now I think I'm gonna do my fertilizers on the second shelf down here. My TPS1. That doesn't fit. CalMag. I've got my liquid gold leaf, which smells like ass right now. I think it's getting old. Um, and then all of my TPS um, indoor plant food and stuff. And then I also have my Epiphytes Delight. It's so funny, doing this video reminds me of the guy who commented on my last organizing video, my plant organizing video, and he was like, what a bunch of useless crap or pointless crap. <laughs> not a fan, not a fan. I have my TPS Liquid Soil that I don't reach for all the time, so I'll put this down here. And then I think I'll also do my pest stuff down here. Two bottles or two cans of Dr. Dew Spider Mite Spray. I've got Copper Fungicide and Captain Jack's Dead Bug Spray. Oh, I need a space at the top for my watering can. That looks stupid. I'll put it down here. I actually do reach for this pretty often. This is my box of like zip ties and um, velcro ties, trellis clips. All of these are my hooks, which I actually do reach for all the time, surprisingly. My spray bottle, which can go here. Oh, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> oh, MSU Azimax. I have a crap ton of <laughs> Rubbing alcohol, I'll go put this in my um, medicine cabinet because I don't need two bottles in my plant room. Ah. I know this looks crazy, but it's sort of like my catch-all for random things that I actually do need. But I should probably organize all my scoopers 
which can stay in here, but this can um, this can go up here. Uh, I don't like that. Kind of feels weird at the top. I don't know why. And it feels weird at the bottom too. Uh, not really. Whatever. I'll just put it at the bottom. Labeler. This is a bunch of stuff for fungus gnats. It's it's funny because like this doesn't seem like it really belongs on this cart, but at the same time, I feel like it doesn't belong in the closet. So I have room down here, so I'll just shove it down here too. All my squirt bottles. This is what it looks like so far. She's getting pretty full. I don't have a ton of space left, but at the same time, I'm almost cleared out in here. Oh, shit. Oh, I forgot I had these. You know what? I think I'm actually, oh, I should have given this to my sister-in-law. I have a bunch of plant food that, I mean, I don't really, like this stuff works fine. Fertilizers are kind of all the same. Um, I have, where did I get this? Peppermint oil. I was gonna use it for something. Oh, don't remember. Don't remember. Okay. Oh, and then the last thing I have are these plant tags and Q-tips and cookie paste rooting gel and stuff. I use this when I'm cleaning mealybugs. So honestly, I feel like everything that's supposed to be on this cart is now on the cart, which is great because I'm pretty much like dead out of space. Um, I feel like this is, ugh, I don't know what to do. Okay, okay, calm down. Because my tent is here, I can, like I physically cannot get to that side of the tent. So what I think I'm gonna do is empty out everything and literally grab stuff from my other closet and shove it in here. And I'm gonna use this as actual storage, like things to be stored away, things like we don't need at all. Um, and that right side will just be completely filled with storage things. And then I'll leave this left side for my substrates. And I'm gonna time lapse it all because it's not gonna be fun. I'm gonna use my phone to show you guys what this looks like right now because I seriously, I can't move the camera even if I wanted to. So, this is, yeah, this is everything. It's so weird because I feel like I'm constantly cleaning crap out, but like, how does it accumulate? Hello. Did I wake you up? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You can go back to sleep. Okay, I'm gonna slide this in here. Ow! Let's uh first, first, put all the things that I know I need. And on it, I honestly don't think everything is gonna fit, but I'm gonna try. I really will.
even the worst part about doing things like this, to me, it's not the big stuff. It's not moving things. It's not moving things. <laughs> um, it's the small thing. It's all the little tiny trinket things where you're like, I need to find a place for it. And I'm not the type of person that will just have like a bin of like miscellaneous stuff. Like I feel like I could be the only house, maybe not. I, I just, I don't have one of those miscellaneous drawers that I would say most houses have um, because the thought of having a miscellaneous drawer stresses me out. I feel like everything needs to have a specific place, which also stresses me out. So it's like a double-edged sword. Let's take a little break. I'm gonna show you something I discovered about the Dioscoria Discolor for the first time. Oh. I have learned that they are not very forgiving when they get really <laughs> thirsty. And I don't even know how it got this thirsty, to be honest. I've been watering it and I just gave it a chop not too long ago and I checked it and it had water, so I don't know. But we're gonna get this vine out of here and I'm gonna see if I can stick this in like a humidity bin. I mean, I don't know, it seems kind of weird to try and save it when I could just chop it off, but it's stressing me out. So let's just do that really quick. You know what I just realized? I think it's thirsty because I freaking, wait, how did that happen? I chopped it. Why is the bottom missing? I'm so confused. Where are the roots to this? I do think I'm going to repot this tonight at some point if I'm not here till 2 a.m. because it has just outgrown this pot and this trellis is bothering me. It's just wobbling everywhere. So anywho, back to this. I don't know if I've ever shown this on this channel before, but I got this massive, massive vessel from my friend Pearl and um, she has a bunch of these and I'm hoping she gives me more. But I don't really have anything to pot. I don't have anything to pot in it right now, so I'm gonna use it for my poles. Everything in here is like as clean as it's ever gonna be. I am a little bit confused as to where my brush is for this pan. I knew I had it somewhere. Before you guys give me too much credit, um, it's a mess out here. And I have two boxes of laziness that I need to wash which will happen in this video, not tonight, but we're gonna continue tomorrow. Um, I feel like that's all I can do in terms of cleaning, but for the most part, it's looking, I mean, it's looking a lot better. Like, I just, I feel like I can, there's so much room for activities. Here is what the closet looks like. I feel like it's so much better than any setup I've ever had in here, and I don't know why I've struggled so much with organizing my plant stuff considering how much room I actually have in here for things like all these cabinets, a whole closet, but to be fair, this also serves as um, like our cleaning stuff and our storage stuff. So I do have to share it. Um, and the cart is nice and full. I'm loving it already. So we're just gonna set up shop here and I'm gonna do some plant stuff. I think I'm gonna repot my Dioscoria now. That seems, that seems like a good thing to do. I don't know if this plant is gonna throw a fit um, if I repot it while emergent leaves are coming out, but 
the likelihood of me um, being able to find a window where this is not pushing out a new leaf is literally impossible. So we're just gonna do it because I know that it's gonna grow back. It's kind of too bad because I love the way that it was climbing this trellis, but we'll see if I can get it to look somewhat decent again. It's just, it's been busting out of here and I feel so bad for it. Oh crap. You see this? It's stuck. Oh, we're going to leave that on there. That's a permanent clip. I'm just going to loosen it a little bit and then just pop it into the new vessel. And I need micro. This is one of my new thrifted vessels that I just picked up like two days ago, I think. I just made a fresh batch of Ina's Pond, which I have linked in the description. By the way, I know that I have been sort of um, mentioning Ina's Pond a lot in my last few videos, and that's because it's the only pond I have right now. Um, I like the pond. Uh, it was gifted to me, but the pond works great for me. Um, but just to let you guys know, I'm not like affiliated with her company in the sense that like I get paid. Um, she just gave me free product. I don't get like any commission if you guys buy pond or plants or anything from her. I have no affiliation to Variegated Plant Shop at all in terms of sales. So is this supposed to be rooted in here? What am I looking at exactly? Oh, it's an offshoot, okay. Um, I'm going to do the big mama trellis because I know she's going to need it. I could even go this way as well so that she has like more things to climb. I've got a very fancy setup here. I'm going to try and like figure out which vine goes with what because it's all kind of a hot, oh, sorry. It's a hot mess. Okay, so I have this vine here. That is him. Oh, I still have some of that dead vine wrapped around here. Okay, let's get to clipping because this is just going everywhere. So let's start with, ow this long one here that is being absolutely crushed out new. So who does this big guy belong to? Well, since this clip is already here, let's just clip it on to that pole. And I really am gonna try and like actually wrap this because these vines are so long and the vines are pretty flexible. Um, I'm gonna need to place a rock to stabilize these trellises, but um, okay, that's number one. And then I think I can wrap this guy around this trellis. And the leaves are kind of gonna be all over the place, but I think it, it'll sort itself out as, um, it gets situated in this vessel, hopefully. Um, we've got this long one that is also a part of this vine here. So we will get them back together. It's not gonna look great for a while. This vine does not look good. She looks unhealthy. Why is she, she built like that? So I'm gonna chop, well, I'm gonna chop all these leaves off and um, propagate this vine and see if I can get anything from it. It's looking pretty terrible, but you know what? If there's anything I've learned, it's that there's always some sort of growing pain when you repot anything that is vining or trailing. It's always gonna look kind of Willy Wonka. So I'm not gonna worry about it like looking pretty for now, I'm going to just hope that it gets settled into this vessel. And um, then once it's in the cabinet, I'm sure they'll all start to face 
the same way again. And now at least once everything starts branching out all over the place, I'll have more areas to wrap it. I can even wrap it around the whole thing if the vine is really long. Um, and all of these new leaves are gonna eventually fill in some of the sparse areas. Like there's a new leaf here, a new leaf here, a new leaf down here, um, a new leaf right there. So yeah, this is it for now. I'm gonna chop the leaves off just to save some space in there. Um, I don't even know if I finished my thought. I'm a little bit delirious, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna do the propagation dome method, oh, method on this one. And hopefully this one comes back to life because I would love to have another one to either add to my pot or sell. Okay, she's, she's fighting me. And I'm just gonna cover it like this. There's some water in there. My camera's not focusing. Hello. Anyway, here's the, the propagation dome. I'm just gonna stick it. Oh, I'm just gonna stick it in here. Call it a day. And then I think the last thing I'm gonna do before I go, because now it is midnight. It wasn't quite an all nighter, but I am very, very tired. And I do need to save some energy for tomorrow because we're gonna continue cleaning. Uh, we will wash all the prop vessels and hopefully this gets you motivated to wash yours too because I know you've got some. Um, but first, let's give you a little update. So um, I feel like I mentioned it very, very briefly, but I grabbed a whole bunch of elbow cuttings from a friend who I propagated her mother plant like a million times. That's where my elbow that I have, basically any elbow you've seen in this house, it came from her plant. So I went to her house for a little bit of plant maintenance and stuff and we chopped one of her elbows and um, I just, yeah, chopped them into like double and single nodes, stuck them into water and they're rooting pretty quickly actually. It's always great when you have a long aerial root to work with because then you can get some of these nice roots um, pretty quickly. I always find that my single nodes um, root the fastest, but unless it's a top cutting. So yeah, this one has no roots yet, but once these get a little bit longer, then I'm gonna switch them to, um, to the cheese upon. But the variegation is pretty low, which is why we chopped her plant. Besides that half moon cutting that I showed you, but the auxiliary bud, oh, so the auxiliary bud on this one falls on this side. So um, yeah, it, this one probably is gonna be low variegation too, but two of the other cuttings that I have, the auxiliary bud falls on a half moon line. So hopefully we have some better luck with that one. But so anyway, I think that is it for me tonight. Um, I'm gonna get some rest. Busy day tomorrow. Maybe we'll, I mean, I'm not going to just drag you along for cleaning and stuff, but maybe we'll do like one repot or something fun or something. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you in, um, well, for me, it's going to be overnight, and for you, it's going to be one second.
bone to pick with myself. No, I have two bones to pick with myself. I started editing this video and turns out the audio was absolute crap. Basically, long story short, oh my gosh, my camera. So um, I have been testing out this new mic and it didn't work out, unfortunately. It was great the first time I used it, then it just went to crap. Um, so I had messed with the settings on my camera to accommodate the new mic. And then when I took the mic off, it uh, forgot to set it back to the original setting. So I had to try and fix it in post. I feel like it sounded worse. So I apologize in advance. I feel like the last few videos, I have just been all over the place with the audio. And it's like one of those things where it's like it gets worse before it gets better. I mean, I'm hoping that's the case. But basically, all that to say, I apologize for the audio in this video in the first half. Hopefully this sounds better. If you did notice anything and you have no clue what I'm talking about, please just ignore me. The second bone I have to pick with myself. Wait, what was the second bone? Anyway, I managed to um, condense two hours of me washing dishes or washing these vessels last night into, I think I condensed it to like three minutes, but I was there for two freaking hours. And you know what? I can't even complain because it is truly, I'm having difficulties here. It is the consequences of my own actions because the reason that I downsized my um, box of laziness was so that I can be more on top of things and not let it get so bad, but then I'm just like, you know, what's one more and one more until I have literally two, I don't know, two hours worth of uh, vessels. Wash. Wow. Ow. My toe. We need to clean this too, but that's a problem for another day, I think. Oh, I remember the, th the second bone I had to pick with myself. So this whole video that I'm filming right now was completely impromptu, unplanned, not in the schedule. And I was like, oh, like I'm already doing plant chores. Let's just film it really quick. I'll have like a quick video to put up on Wednesday. Why have I been filming for three days? This is why, this is why my legs don't get shaved. Why I, I don't sleep. It's fine, because I get a lot done, I really do, but I don't need to be filming for three days for one Wednesday video, that's all I'm saying. And the reason I say that is because for some reason, my left, well, I'm not going to say for some reason, like, I'm like so popular or whatever, but my Wednesday videos are much less, I will say, must, must, must. What? Much less watched than my Saturday videos. This is going up on a Saturday. Don't listen to me. Poor thing, she's so confused. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and put all these away and then, like I said, we'll get into the plant chores for today.
Hello, welcome to my very fancy potting station. Um, I'm still without a table because I cannot afford one right now. Okay, not that I can't afford it, but like, I'm just, you know when you're like, over budget, but then you're like, so you're over budget, but then there's times where you're like, absolutely over budget, that's, that's where I am right now. So, I gotta wait till next month. So, anyway, we're gonna do the easy one first. Um, this really is nothing, but just kind of wanted to walk you through my thought process. So this is Miss Alocasia Friedek, looking at Gorgina, like a dream, like the it girl, the main character. Um, she's doing great. I mean, she, she's doing great. <laughs> there is that little corm that I have literally lost sleep over. There's a part of me that wants to rescue it so bad, but there's so many new roots that I'm like, it's probably not worth it. Where did the corn go? She just, oh, she's right here. Yeah, she's getting squished. So anyway, um, yeah, there's a corn stuck here. I've been thinking about it a lot, but we're just gonna leave it. So the new leaves are like getting pretty ginormous. Um, I have these two leaves down here that I'm actually, I'm just gonna chop them off because I feel like at this point, the plant is using like more energy and nutrients to try and sustain this leaf with a lot of white. So I'm going to cut her off. This one um, doesn't look the greatest. I'm just gonna cut it off too and just reserve any energy this plant has to sustaining these beautiful leaves. Um, this one seriously has been growing so fast for me. I like cannot even believe it and I think I think this is an alocasia friday corn. I think so I had it in um, I had it in pond. I also had it in moss was not doing anything I moved it to stratum and she's on the go. So to everyone who has been hounding me hounding me to use stratum as a rooting substrate. I am so sorry it took so long for me to listen to you. Seriously, I like, cause I had tried stratum before, right? And I was just like, eh, whatever. Like, I don't know, I just didn't see, I just didn't see the hype using it. Um, right now I'm only growing one plant in stratum, which is my homolomina that's growing aquaponically. And I mean, it's fine. I just, again, I don't like how gritty it is. I don't like how dusty and dirty it is. But I will say that for propagations, it has been like incredible. This Peperomia prostrata, the string of turtles, um, this one has also taken off in stratum. There's like so much new growth in here. Don't even ask me what the hell the plan is with this guy because I have no freaking clue. So anyway, thank you to everyone who had urged me to use stratum for props. I owe you my life. Next thing. On the to-do list is one of my friend's elbows that has been growing literally in perlite for, I wanna say a year and a half. Like it's been way too long in this perlite. So we're gonna rescue it. We're gonna get it out. There's actually a second growth point coming out. So I'm gonna take you through my process. And I think I'm going to be repotting it in this lovely vessel if it fits. Um, I got this from my sister-in-law, who is amazing. She knows that I like no drainage. Um, she knows like sort of the color scheme that I follow in my house. So yeah, she gifted this to me. So thank you, Wit. I don't think she watches my plant videos, but if you are watching Wit, thank you. I'm just gonna remove the tags. I think that this, I think there might've been like a, maybe a candle? In here, I'm not quite sure what this was, but it's like a reused glass vessel. I can see some um, black roots that have rotted, so we've got some cleaning up to do as well. I'm gonna loosen this guy. Love having this cart right next to me. We're just gonna slide it because these roots are actually really thick and it's gonna be fine. So much algae though. Okay, so here's the situation. 
you can see there are some black mushy roots but it's mostly healthy roots with just a lot of algae so I'm gonna get this untangled really fast I just thought of something while I was untangling this. Um, sorry, if you're not watching this show, you can just skip over this part. But if you're watching The Last of Us, um, some thoughts. Uh, just I'll, I'll throw up a timestamp for people who are not caught up because I don't want to give away any spoilers. If you're not paying attention, Hello, listen, hello, hi, yeah, C come come to the screen or your phone. Um, look at the timestamp on the screen if you haven't seen the newest episode of The Last of Us. I'm about to talk about some spoilers. I was very, very excited about this show. I still am. It is one of my favorite video games. And as someone who played the video games, uh, I think I played it three times, um, I will say I am, I feel like I'm feeling a bit <laughs> robbed of the zombie slash spooky part of this game. I kind of already knew there was going to be a lot of dialogue and storyline around the human um, connections around the, the characters because the game was very much like that and it sort of like drew on your emotions and made you really attached to certain characters so I, I knew that they were going to play that up and really really like go hard with that that was just my thought like going into it but I didn't know that it was going to be so much of the show like how many clickers have, how many clickers have we seen in the show already and it's already the season finale tomorrow or not tomorrow but on Sunday and like how many hordes of zombies have we seen like two two at most I don't know it's just I'm feeling I'm feeling a bit robbed that's that's it and I feel I, I feel like they could have gotten a lot of the same storylines across but still incorporated more zombies and and creatures, you know? Overall, feeling a little bit disappointed. Um, I, I feel like it's one of those things where, like if you read the book and then you watch the movie, it's like the book is always better, you know? That's how I'm feeling right now about the show. But I will say that the cast is freaking amazing. Like, I love Ellie's character so much. I've read a lot of like reviews about people who were sort of judgmental about the casting of Ellie but I will say that I've just like really really grown to love her and she's probably like my favorite character out of the whole show besides Joel who's like a hot tamale obviously. This stem is really freaking long what the heck. So yeah, um, those are just my thoughts. I, yeah, I think though that the design of the clickers are beautiful, I think, but I think that I'm biased because it's based off of this whole like fungi thing and you know, obviously my go and all of this uh, mycelium stuff that I've really gotten into lately, it's just, yeah, it's beautiful and I feel like they designed the clickers and the zombies to be very beautiful where like you can see like all the details of the mushrooms and stuff that they're made of but there's just not enough of it like I feel like they gave us little glimpses here and there of like how creepy the show could be but then they just like left it at that and then just like didn't ever give us more so I don't know is it a budget thing or is it just really how they like wanted to write this show no clue um, anywho, enough of that. I am feeling very gross right now. Fun fact, I don't like the feeling of perlite. It reminds me of styrofoam, so I'm, I'm feeling pretty grossed out right now. A good amount of root breakage, but we're going to remove probably... Actually, I don't know. Some of these roots don't look great, but uh, we're going to get into it in a bit. But 
I'm gonna just give this a wash down in the sink to get all of this perlite off, get all this gunk off, and then we'll get everything cleaned up, including myself, because I'm covered in perlite. Here's the situation. This is what I was looking at that I did not like, but we're gonna scrape it away and just kind of see what is happening under here. It is likely just oxidation and nothing to worry about, but I just wanna make sure that there's no rotty, slimy tissue underneath where the actual root is. And you can see it's really, really green and happy and healthy. So yeah, nothing to worry about. It's just mucky and gunky that happens with plants. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, I think that scraping it and trying to remove it is gonna do more damage than good or more harm than good. So I'm gonna leave that, I'm happy about it. Um, I do have multiple nodes here. So what I wanna do is separate this growth point from the rest of the plant because right now it's putting all of its energy into this plant here. And I kind of wanna send this one sort of into shock, which is kind of mean, but that's how I'm gonna wake up this growth point even more. So, I'm gonna chop it, and it looks like it already has its own root system, so that's good. I'm gonna chop it um, closer to this node than this one, so that I have some leeway if it rots, but I don't wanna cut into, oh, well, it's fine because this auxiliary bud is already activated from this growth point, so I can't get anything else out of this out of this node anyway. So I'm gonna cut down here. I feel like this is gonna be like the perfect size root system to sustain this new growth. It's so perfect and cute. So we'll get to this one a little bit later because we're not or I'm not done with that yet. I want to see how much root system I have on this aerial root here and also this one because I just want to know if I need all of this in my vessel. So there is quite a bit of roots or there are quite a bit of roots on this part of the stem so I don't really want to chop it all off but I can probably at least eliminate just the bottom to free up some space in the vessel because um, I feel like this root system is pretty decent for a plant this size that is actively growing and I can see here that it's looking a little bit plump and I think a new leaf is going to come out soon so I'm going to cut here and just throw this away because nothing is going to grow out of this Tissue looks nice and healthy. Um, to be honest, I probably could chop off like this whole thing and just, you know, use the, the new part of the growth, but I feel like my vessel is gonna be big enough that I can just have this entire root system. So I won't cut anymore, but I do wanna just clean things up because you know how I am. I won't need to clean up this chunk because everything just looks oxidized. It's to me, this is not like mushy, gross kind of brown. Um, I, I feel like once you're doing this a while and you're cleaning up your chunks, you can kind of decipher what should be removed and what shouldn't be removed. So now this one is ready to be repot, but I'm going to handle this first. So this is a good example of where I would go in with my scraper. So this is obviously where the new growth point is gonna come out, but this area right here is gonna be super crucial when you're rooting really any kind of plant, but obviously we're gonna just specifically talk about the Monstera. So Albo, I will say like Albo nodes, like if you bought it just like this, the likelihood of this rotting, I mean, it's a 50-50 chance. It's not like, like a lot of people will seal it with candle wax, which I find to be more harmful than good in terms of trapping in bacteria inadvertently. Um, you can see here how it's sort of puckered and dried up. So depending on like where you're buying it from, some nodes 
I know you guys have seen it. Some nodes are like this small and they're so tiny. So imagine someone cuts it, gives you a fresh cut, and then it starts to like dry up and pucker and it goes into where like the growth point is, then you're screwed. So this area here is gonna be super important in trying to get roots on the new stem. So what I like to do is make sure that it's like sort of peeled back and exposed so that it's um, touching whatever substrate it's in and scraping it, in my experience, sort of activates the, like the rooting process or it like speeds it up. So I'm just gonna go along here and just kind of scrape off all of this calloused tissue and just like wake it up. And then that way, let's say if I was dealing with a rotty chunk here, at least I'm starting to like wake things up here just in case I really do need to like slice it off and try and save the plant. Um, but in this case, I, yeah, this, this stem is like a good size to work with. This side's already calloused up. I'm not worried about it. And then, yeah, I would pretty much uncover about this much. I just want like this layer of tissue to be exposed and I'm gonna get it cleaned up and then we'll get things potted. We're gonna do the little baby one first and I actually think that I'm gonna pot this one in soil instead of pond. So I'm actually just leaving the stem exposed over the substrate and I'm going to root it like this and now she's done. Let's see how big this root system is in compared to this vessel first. I think it's going to be kind of tight. It's a little bit, it's a little bit more full than I want it to be because I'm, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add a pole already, but I might do a lazy pole and not like a pole pole. Look away if you don't like root trimming, but it's happening. I'm gonna chop away these two over here that's attached to this chunk. pretty huge portion that I removed but it is going to free up a lot of space in the vessel and now I'm happy with this. That is a lot better. Um, do I want to do a pull? I mean I probably should just to like get it out of the way right now but gosh these leaves are facing all different types of directions. Okay okay let's just do it. I'm gonna add some LECA just to um, not have to use so much pawn. I think the only other thing that I need to do tonight and for the, for the remainder of this video is gonna be to do some watering and checking in on some propagations and stuff. But I think while I do that, I'll um, answer the last of the personal questions on my Q&A because the next repot Q&A is going to be only planty questions and not personal questions. But I did still have like a handful of personal questions that were not answered. So I figure I'll just... Um, I'll just do it in this video while I'm watering. Um, okay, let's just finish this up. Okay, 
feel like that was a journey, but she's done. And I'm feeling, I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. I know that I chopped off a lot of roots, but for the size of this plant, I would say the root system that it's left with is actually a really good size considering I also chopped off one of the growth points. So we are going to always just say a little prayer, put out some good vibes into the universe and hope for a successful transfer. Okay, so the first question is, um, how is your mental health? There was like three parts to this question, but basically saying that I hadn't really been talking about it and I hadn't done an update since that um, anxiety, depression, and plants video that went out two years ago now. Mental health, on a scale of 10, I will say that it's at a solid eight right now which honestly to me is like a 15 in comparison to where i was two years ago so um quickly uh, i'm going to have one water one with um great white and one with tps actually i'll probably put great white in two of them because these plants have not been inoculated in a while and i don't think any of my props have been inoculated so yeah, uh, mental health has been really good. I know that I mentioned, and this was actually another question, I talked about a couple months ago about how I was going through something right now and like things were just like insane and my world got flipped upside down. That is very much still a thing. Um, some people were worried that it was a health thing. I did mention in that video, like off the bat, I was like, everyone is fine, everyone's healthy, nobody is dying or you know like everyone's fine health wise um so that's not that's not an issue but yeah there's just a lot of stuff going on right now that I can't talk about because let's just say that there are things happening legally in my life I can't talk about it because th there hasn't been any traction on it yet we are just sort of like waiting right now and things are moving slowly but surely and i'm hoping that one day um this situation is in a place where i can talk more openly about it i will never talk about like the people involved or like the deep like details of every single thing that happened but i am going to speak on it eventually publicly because it's something that has consumed my life for too many years now and i do feel like some good can come out of everything that's happened and i want to be able to help other people so uh yeah i will be talking about it it's just it's currently going on so i just can't talk about it right now um but yeah overall mental health has been significantly better which is weird because i feel like with everything that happened in this situation I had to really go through it and be at like almost what felt like the lowest point in my life which did not last very long because I have like an amazing amazing support system um, my parents are amazing my sisters are amazing and yeah I just I sort of like quickly bounced out of that state of mind and I really went into it like those first few few well that first week I was like I need to take a break from everything I'm probably not going to be posting on YouTube that much and um you know I wanted to give you guys the heads up that things were going to be really weird but it just yeah I feel like after like that I don't know two week mark I was like a totally different person like something chemically changed in my brain and like I've just been good and I talked to you know my therapist about it and was like is it is it sort of like a false sense of happiness or am I riding a high that's gonna like come down like is this gonna be temporary and it just hasn't it just hasn't stopped so yeah I feel good I feel like this is like the best that I've been in a while even though I'm going through some pretty fucked up shit right now like just to be fully honest with you but at the same time I feel strong mentally like I feel strong enough to like deal with it and be like listen we're gonna put our big girl pants on we're gonna bad bitch through this whole thing 
and that's like the the mentality that I've been in for like the last few months and I have been eating better I've been working out again so I feel like I'm like actually doing things um, I quit smoking I'm actually doing things that are like helping me get better um, I think that I had to sort of had like I had to have a pity party for a little while and sort of I don't know I was in a state of like mourning and this will under you, you'll understand why when I'm able to talk about the situation but I got to a point where I was like nope I'm over it I'm too tired of living like this like like I'm done and yeah now I am where I am it's not to say that like things won't go back down because I think when you have uh, mental health issues like it's um it's like an up and down thing and I think one thing that I really wanted to touch on and I do plan on doing oh my god this thing has been out of a greenhouse for 20 minutes and it's already so soggy I'm so tired of this fucking plant it's a um, anthurium extipulatum are you kidding me literally 20 minutes it's been out of this humidity dome and it's already throwing a fit I'm not dealing with that you know I'm probably gonna just throw that plant away we're not no the hell was I talking about what was I saying but um, on the topic of mental health oh oh I remember so I feel like you know there's so much talk about mental health stuff right now which I think is great but like let's just be fully I, like I'm just gonna spit my thoughts out here and I might have people that don't like what I'm about to say but I feel like um, a lot of people are not receptive or are not fully understanding the mental health crisis fully because it kind of feels like everybody is dealing with something mental health wise and people are throwing out depression and anxiety and panic attacks out everywhere on social media that i i can see like when something wasn't talked about for a long time and now all of a sudden it's like everybody has depression everybody has anxiety but i think that's something that like you have to remember is in like the history of like the human race it has not like mental health has not been talked about as much as it has been until now so you know back in the day we talk about cancer we talk about high blood pressure and diabetes and all of these other physical issues that plague us and uh, you know there are so many people with high blood pressure high cholesterol chronic chronic illnesses and it's like we just glaze over it because yeah oh it's a physical illness so why should like mental health be treated any differently i think that like when people throw out the word mental health they automatically assume like oh this person is trying to say that they have depression or they have like you know anxiety disorder or something that's not that i feel like that's not that's not the point or that's not what a lot of people are referring to i think where this the mind the shift in the mindset has to happen is viewing mental health as just a part of health in general so if someone says like my mental health is suffering it just means they're in a bad place they're not feeling well mentally it's not like they're like oh i'm on i'm depressed and i need to go get antidepressants like that's not what that's not what everybody means it just means that people are now prioritizing their mental health because if your mental health is not good your physical health is not going to be good trust me i know um so you know that's that's that and if, if people want to view you know people using mental health as like a cop out or like a scapegoat i get it because it has been thrown around so much but i hope that for the most part that people can just understand that as a human mental health is just a part of being human it's it's just like your physical health so i don't know if any of that makes sense it just is what it is but anyway um god this manjula is so weird and cute it's like she wants to have a different identity she doesn't know who she is but look how cute she is um so yeah anyway all that to say i have just been trying to take care of myself better 
I am slowly weaning myself off of my medications. I don't think that I'll ever be off my panic attack medicines completely. Um, I, I just feel like that's something that you know I've dealt with for the last more than a decade now, and I I just I, I want to have those medications just to know that like if I'm ever in a situation, especially in public, where I'm having like a full blown panic attack, that I can take something to help me. But in terms of my um, antidepressants, I do feel confident enough to completely get off of it. So for the last six months, I've been slowly weaning off. Um, I'm hoping next month I go down even more. And I'm hoping by the summertime, or at least by the end of the year, that I'm completely off those medications. And that is truly just because I'm listening to my body. I feel like I have done enough therapy to sort of understand why I process the way that I process things and why my body reacts in a certain way to physical triggers. And um, I always told myself when I got on medications in 2020 that if it was gonna be, if this was gonna be a long-term thing, I would accept it. Um, but I also said that I was going to actively try and get well. Um, and I feel like I've been getting to that point. So yeah, those are the goals with my mental health. I just want to be off those medicines if I can. Um, but of course, I'm leaving that up to my mental health um, advisors, both my doctor and my, my doctor, my therapist, and my psychiatrist, like all three of them. Basically, I want them to feel good about me being off of them. So yeah, what the hell is this? But you know, it's always a good thing to talk about. So let's move on to the next question. I am so thirsty. I don't know what this was, but it's dead now. I have a feeling this was the bottom of my pink princess, which just did, did not, it did not like to be chopped at all. Okay, I'm overwhelmed with propagations. Um, I hate this thing so much. This is my splendid, like, I think, I feel like I'm just like not good at growing this plant. I really enjoy it, but I think it's the varicosum in it that like <laughs> is betraying me, honestly. Look at this stem, it's redonkulous. I don't even know what to do at this point. Like, like I could pot it and put it on a pole, but then like the stem is so stinking long. Does it even matter? I think I'll just, oh yeah, I'll include this in my next repot, I think. Um, for plants that I need to get a handle on and the rest of the props are just kind of like whatever I think that this is a soderoy wait why is it red oh maybe a majestic why did I propagate it out why did I propagate a majestic oh my gosh what is your nationality are you Filipino I am Filipino um, I've actually had a few questions in the past when I open up, ow, that was a cactus. <laughs> when I open up my, um, my questions to just like ask me anything, um, I actually get quite a few questions about being Filipino and I'm not sure why actually, but some people are fascinated by it. I grew up in San Jose, California, and there is a massive Vietnamese um, community there. And I don't know, at, like growing up, a lot of people assumed that I was Vietnamese. And honestly, I felt Vietnamese. I basically could have been Vietnamese. Um, I grew up eating more Vietnamese food, I think, or I, that's how it feels like. All my best friends were Vietnamese, all my boyfriends were Vietnamese. I just was very Vietnamese. And I miss I miss it, honestly. I miss I miss that part and that time of my life. But at the same time, no offense to anyone who still lives in San Jose, but I would never want to live there again. 
I actually get kind of stressed out going back there. It feels very busy, claustrophobic, and I don't know, I just, I don't vibe there anymore. Of course I love going back and seeing friends, seeing my old schools, visiting my old houses and stuff, but I'm just, yeah. Going back to the Bay Area like truly, truly stresses me out and I only do it if I absolutely have to. Um, anyway, that wasn't the question. The question was, uh, yeah, are you Filipino? So yes, I am. Both of my parents are Filipino. My sister did a DNA test, like genetic testing thingamajig. I'll see if I can plug in what hers is because obviously ours are going to be identical. Um, but in terms of like the connection with my culture and heritage and all that, um, I'm, I'm not really, I guess I'm not really in touch with it, if you can say that. So I mentioned this in a different video, I can't remember which video now, but um, my parents are both immigrants, so they immigrated from the Philippines when they were teenagers. I think they were teenagers. And my dad, so obviously when he had us three girls, he just wanted us to like be able to make it here in America. And I think as an immigrant, he felt like the best chance that we had would be to Americanize us as much as possible. And I don't hold this against my dad because I know his intentions were good. Um, he's even admitted that he wishes he would have gone about it a different way. But because he wanted that for us, um, he didn't allow my grandparents to teach us Tagalog. Um, my parents both spoke to us in English and we were not taught how to speak the language. Fortunately, for my grandparents. They are rebels and they did speak to us in Tagalog. They taught us a little bit of Tagalog and because of that, I can understand it pretty much fluently but cannot speak it to save my life. I, I couldn't even utter like a sentence to you but if you were having a full on conversation with me in Tagalog, I would, I would likely understand you. Um, so yeah, it's weird how it works that way. But other than that, I don't, yeah, like I've never even been to the Philippines. I, like I would want to go, I'm just a little bit scared of going that far, to be honest. I will go eventually because a lot of my um, family is moving back there and like one of my aunts just opened a resort there and like I'd love to go visit and stuff. One of my aunts that I'm the closest with is going to be moving there in the next few years. So yeah, there's no way that I can go years and years without seeing her. So I am going to have to visit at some point. Look at how big and beautiful my Mexicanum is now. Like this new leaf, it's insane. Like the size of it. Look at it in, in comparison to my hand. It's big, like the little ears are like as long as my hand and it's just on this bamboo pole which I only just put on recently. I don't know if it's gonna do anything. But she's huge, she's doing so well and she's so compact. Um, anywho, yeah, so I would like to go back and kind of, I don't know, just kind of see like where my parents grew up, what it was like, like their what their surroundings were were like. Um, I want to see the province that my mom came from. Like that kind of stuff fascinates me but at the same time yeah I just I get travel anxiety and I just have this fear of being that far away from <laughs> my home. Um, I also have a fear that like if I go anywhere off of this continent I'm just gonna get sick because I always get sick whether it's like tummy issues or migraines. I feel like whenever I go anywhere, I just always end up sick. So it's probably just me like manifesting it to be honest because I'm so anxious about it. But I guess I don't want to look back when I'm on my deathbed and be like, damn, I wish I just went, you know? But I can cook some Filipino dishes, which I will be 
um, cooking all of the dishes that I know how to make on my vlog channel. Um, so if you're into Filipino food or want to learn how to make some Filipino food, I feel like I make or I know how to make all the easy ones, so they're good ones to follow. Uh, gosh, this is just terrible. What even is happening here? There's so many growth points. You guys, there's three growth points on this thing. Two plant and three growth points. Okay, well, let's just inoculate this and fertilize this and move on with our lives. By the way, a few people asked about this um, planter and this is actually just a storage box from Muji. So yeah, you can look for it online. I'll try and link it if I can find it. I have no clue what this plant is. I think I got it from my mom. I'm losing my voice. She definitely needs to be repotted though. Oh, it says Ingomarcanum, but I'm not sure about that ID. Well, this soil is super old. You know what? I think I'm gonna repot this because this, this needed to be repot like a long time ago. This was probably put in here like two and a half years ago, seriously. My throat. I'm gonna quickly water the rest of the plants on here, then we're gonna get into this cabinet and we will answer the last few questions. last question I'm going to answer is what are your social media pet peeves? I feel like I have a few um, but I'm just gonna name some that I can think of just on the top of my head so obviously I have stated this before I do not like um, the reels that are just engagement grabby and this goes for really anything not just plants but just like any reel that people make about anything that it's like they just do it because they know it's going to get engagement and yeah that's like my number one pet peeve did i just water in here why is everything watered i must not have remembered but look at my new nigro laminum gg leaf you guys this is the first leaf i have grown in my care it's the first plant i haven't killed um this is my third Nigro Laminum GG and the reason that I haven't been showing it on social media really at all is because I don't want to jinx it so I hope that I'm not jinxing it now but she's doing okay she's in tree fern fiber right now growing out like crazy so I'm gonna have to move her soon but I'm not gonna do anything until this new leaf is hardened off and it's still kind of soft so I'm hoping she gets a little bit bigger than this but she is like the token GG girl, like look at her. I forgot what this was, the nickname was for this, but this was Lauren's um, hybrid. It's a Crystal Mag for Getty Eye Lux, and it's very, very cute. And it's growing, it's growing pretty well. It did get spider mites, which it ha which is why it has all these little blemishes. But we got it resolved, um, and now she's growing. So I think I watered in here already, which is why it, everything is all watered. So now the last place that we need to go is in this red stuff because everything here has been watered already. <sighs> okay, so more social media peeves. Um, one that I can think of right now is I, I have a lot of DMs and I'm not the best at answering them because between YouTube comments, DMs, Instagram comments, like it just gets, it gets really overwhelming and that's why um, people who, I guess, like have a social media presence, they hire someone to kind of go through their socials and like help them with that. But I just, I don't know, I feel that, I feel that's just unnecessary for me. I'm not like, 
like a celebrity or like a huge influencer you know so um i just i try and stay on top of it as best as i can but it is very draining um and after responding for i don't know hours and hours you're like i can't do it anymore so i get a lot of dms and comments and think and things that go unanswered as i'm sure a lot of you guys know but i'll often get messages where like they'll message me and then a couple days later they'll be like hello and then they will message again and be like like really you're just not going to answer like you know they leave something snarky like there is this one guy that i um found recently in my dms and like there was like a trail of messages and it was kind of along the same lines and he's like ridiculous like i can't believe like you know i found you on youtube and you said to message you on instagram for a response and like this is how i'm treated and i'm like dude i literally said in that video that like i'm bad at responding at dms but that's like probably the best way that you can get a hold of me but like i literally have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of unread messages so yeah that's a pet peeve is when is when people like I don't know give me attitude for not responding you know because it's like in my free time like any spare time where I'm not working I because I have a job like I have a job like this is not what I do full-time um, if I did do this full-time I probably would be a lot better at answering DMs and comments and stuff but yeah like any free time that I get like I use it to clean the house and clean myself and sleep and spend time with my husband so it's not like every free moment that I get I'm like oh my gosh I have to make sure that I'm caught up on on all of my messages you know I wish like in a perfect world I would be but I'm not, and I don't think I ever will be. So anyway, yeah, that's another pet peeve of mine. Another pet peeve of mine is people in the plant community that like, because they have like a larger following or like a large following in general, they'll be like, hey, like, uh, love your content, like hope that you'll follow me back and stuff. And it's like, I don't know I don't like the I don't like when people put pressure on me to like follow them or like be friends with them just because they're like essentially doing the same thing that I am I don't know like is that bitchy of me to me it just feels like very like you're putting me in an awkward position because it's not like I just follow anyone you know like I really do keep my circle small and for the people that I do follow, like, like I want to be able to see them on my timeline. Like, I already don't see them enough. So, yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> like, that's great if you want to, like, you know, be an influencer and grow your following. But, like, don't... I feel like you shouldn't pressure people into doing it because it puts them in a weird position. My Dioscoria does not seem to mind being repotted she still looks insane but i think she's gonna fill in super freaking fast oh my gosh i freaking moved this one away from the light like a week ago and it's already browning like what more do you want from me i swear it's like she wants to be like directly under the sun or something i'm over her over her um, another social media um, pet peeve is when people slide into my DMs saying like, how do I buy or like, is this for sale? I think it's the approach. There, ha there have been people that message me that are like, hey, like, you know, do you ever sell cuttings or like, I love, I've been looking for this plant, like, is there any chance that you ship to so and so? And I, like, honestly, I don't mind those comments. I mean, I, I'm not a seller. Like, I don't have an Instagram page to, like, advertise my plants. But it's all about the approach. Like, when you just, like, slide in, not even saying, like, hello or, like, hi, whatever, you know, and you're just, like, are you selling this? It literally feels like you're yelling at me or something. No. 
I, I basically don't like any first message and I don't know if it's just because I'm this way and I would never ever approach someone like this but it's like if you're gonna slide in someone's DMs or like ask someone a question the least that you can do is just say hi the approach is everything I just don't like feeling like you're like running up on me you know honestly I have a lot there's like a lot of things that annoy me I'm just the type of person that gets annoyed very easily but I try and like keep my emotions in check because I am kind of fiery but I also don't want to like I know that sometimes on social media or just in general like just through text things can be misconstrued in a way that it like was not meant to come off as if that makes sense but yeah this is probably the healthiest ficus um, shivariana leaf I've had since I got this plant. The other two leaves that grew in my care were like these warped, mangled little things. And I was like, okay, well this plant hates me. But ever since I repotted it, it um, seems to be doing a lot better, especially getting more light. Well, I think that I am done with watering for the night, it is so hot in here. I'm literally gonna like go out on my balcony and like take all my clothes off. But it has been a journey. This was way longer and more intense than I had anticipated, but I hope I was able to whip up something good for you guys this weekend. Um, as usual, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to me blabber. Um, what else? What else? What else? If you liked it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you don't forget to floss your teeth. Eat well. Get some sleep. And I will see you in the next one.